everybody is fascinated by dinosaurs because of their size. The largest dinosaurs weighed over 50 tons, the largest animals ever to walk the earth. The largest predatory dinosaurs weighed over 20,000 pounds. In the Jurassic Park movies, T-Rex swallows his human victims whole. But the mighty T-Rex came from humble beginnings. The first dinosaur was a little guy, about two feet long. Let me tell you about the first dinosaur. The first thing you need to know is that contrary to popular belief, dinosaurs are not extinct. You probably know that a giant meteor wiped out the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. What you probably don't know is that meteor didn't get them all. Birds are highly specialized dinosaurs. They aren't related to dinosaurs. They aren't descended from dinosaurs. They are dinosaurs. The dinosaurian origin of birds is now accepted as a scientific consensus. Now that scientists can study living dinosaurs, they can infer a lot more about the biology and physiology of the extinct ones. The word dinosaur was coined by British paleontologist Richard Owen in 1842. The name dinosaur means scarily large lizard. Owen defined a dinosaur as a reptile that walked with an upright gait and that seemed to be derived from an ancestor that was bipedal, that walked, like us, on its hind legs only. The upright posture is the key to the evolution of dinosaurs. The living animals that we call reptiles today, lizards, crocodiles, and turtles, have a sprawling posture. Their legs are attached to the sides of their bodies. Ragtime Cowboy Joe crawls on his belly like a reptile. The reason that lizards and crocodiles have a sprawling posture is because they are cold-blooded animals. The temperature of their bodies is the same as the temperature of the air around them. Cold-blooded animals are incapable of aerobic exercise. They are only capable of intense muscular activity for a relatively brief period of time. They tire very quickly and have to rest to recharge their muscles. Sprawling posture is just a thing for an animal that must go instantly from resting to running, but it doesn't work at all for running a long way. If we wanted to bet on crocodile races instead of horse races, they would have to be pretty short, less than 50 yards. The evolution of dinosaurs was made possible by the Permian extinction the biggest extinction event in the history of the Earth. More than 95% of all species were wiped out. The exact causes of the extinction are still somewhat controversial. Scientists do know, however, that about 250 million years ago, all of the continents coalesced into a single supercontinent called Pangaea. At the same time, there were gigantic volcanic eruptions that lasted for thousands of years. Global temperatures soared and the oxygen content of the atmosphere plummeted to half of what it is today. Most of the land area of the Earth became a lifeless desert. Large animals only survived at high latitudes on a small fraction of the Earth's surface. Evolution would favor animals that could thrive in hot, dry conditions. As the Triassic period began 245 million years ago, one group of reptiles that survived were the archosaurs. Archosaurs are the ancestors of modern alligators and crocodiles. Crocodiles, similar to the ones alive today, first appeared in the early Triassic. The archosaur body plan and the semi-aquatic lifestyle proved to be a winning combination. The crocodiles alive today are almost identical to the ones who were around 240 million years ago. The first archosaurs weren't semi-aquatic, they were terrestrial animals. When you watch an archosaur walk, there are two things you should notice. Their hind legs are longer than their front legs. Also, they don't sprawl quite as much as a lizard. They have a posture that is intermediate between the sprawling posture of a lizard and the erect posture of a bird or mammal. This is called a pillar erect posture. At the beginning of the Triassic, there were ecological opportunities for animals to make their living eating insects, small lizards, and the ancestors of mammals. Archosaurs evolved to fill these niches. They were small, active animals who could run for short distances on their hind legs and use their front feet for grabbing their small prey. They began to evolve the elevated metabolism in the super-efficient avian breathing system that enabled them to be active continuously in the hot, oxygen-poor world they lived in. Here is Euparcaria. Euparcaria lived about 245 million years ago, right at the beginning of the Triassic. You can see that he has the basic crocodile body plan, right down to the armored scales on his back. But you can also see that he was capable of bipedal locomotion. Ten million years later, a group called the Ornithodira had evolved. Ornithodira means bird necks, and the Ornithodirans had the S-curved necks and the chicken feet that characterized dinosaurs. This is Lagosuchus. 
Lagosuchus walked on two legs as often as not, but was still not a true biped, and thus not a dinosaur. This is Storia Cosaurus. He lived in what is now Brazil in 225 million years ago, and is one of the oldest known dinosaurs. Although this is not the ancestor of all the rest of the dinosaurs, it is older than the branch of dinosaurs that evolved into birds. If this painting were done today, Storicosaurus would probably be painted with downy feathers like a baby chicken. So there, you have, there you have the first dinosaurs. The first dinosaurs were small, active, fully bipedal predators. And all the rest of the dinosaurs evolved from these little guys. So now you know as much as I do about the origin of dinosaurs. I think you should celebrate by going down to KFC and having